Come on, can we give God a great big hand of praise tonight? Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, can we give God a great big hand of praise tonight? Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, give God a great big hand of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Why don't you lift your hands, everybody, all over the sanctuary? Come on, I want to, before we take another step forward, I just want to usher in the presence of the Holy Ghost even more in this place. We believe in God will minister to us tonight. And I know we come here to celebrate Valentine's Day, but the greatest, the greatest lover of all is Jesus Christ. He is the lover of our soul, the lover of our spirit. Everything that he does, he does it well. He does it very well. And tonight we bless you. God, we bless you tonight. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, God, because of just not only what you're capable of doing, not just what you have already done, but, God, even for the things that are on the way. We thank you, God. We are in love with you tonight. And we are in love with you so much, God, that we're willing to give everything that we have. Now, Father, we pray that you would just saturate our hearts tonight. Give us an understanding ear, an understanding heart, a mind that's open to receive. Bless us tonight, God. Bless us tonight. What do I want everybody to do? While your hands are lifted, come on. I just want you to talk to Jesus tonight. Come on, really quickly. I just want you to love on him tonight. Come on, let your voice be made known to him. Come on, you don't have to be quiet. I, 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 if I could compel you to make some noise with your worship, with your mouth, come on. All you have to do is just open up your mouth and begin to worship a holy God. He is a holy, he is a true, he is a wise God. Everything he does, he does it extremely well. Come on, Father, we bless you. Come on, just love on him tonight. Love on him tonight. Love on him tonight. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Only thing you got to do is give him the fruit of your lips. 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, saints, you can do better than that. Come on. You don't, you don't serve a quiet God. You serve a loud God. Every time he blesses you, he blesses you out loud. Every time you receive, you receive out loud. Come on. We worship you today, Jesus. We worship you today, Jesus. We worship you today, Jesus. Come on, begin to lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands and worship him. Come on, lift your hands and worship him. Come on, lift your hands and worship him. Come on, some of y'all been needing to worship all day. You was, you was looking for an outlet to worship. You was looking for an outlet to glorify him. You was looking for an outlet. You were looking for an outlet. Come on, you was looking for an outlet. You were looking for an outlet. You were looking for an outlet. Come on, come on, come on. You've been looking for an outlet all day. Come on. Come on. You've been looking for an outlet all day. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him. Come on. You've been looking for an outlet all day. Come on. You've been looking for an outlet all day. We bless you, dear Jesus. Bless you. Now, if you're excited about what the Lord is going to do tonight, I, I just dare you, I dare you with everything in you to give him the loudest hand of praise that you can give him. Come on, new generation, make some noise in this Valentine's Day. If you're in love with Jesus, come on, make some noise in the house. Oh, that sounds like we only got three people that's in love with Jesus. I said, if you are in love with Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. How many is excited about tonight? Amen. Amen. Oh, wow. How many is excited about tonight? Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love the Lord. No, uh -uh, no, you got to tell me. You mean to tell me, neighbor, I really love the Lord. I tell your neighbor, I love you too in Jesus' name. Why don't you go to four people? Go to four people real quick and tell them I love you in Jesus' name. Come on, share the Jesus love and tell them I love you in Jesus' name. I know I ain't perfect. I know I may make some flaws. I love you in Jesus' name. Come on, tell them I love you in Jesus' name. Come on up, first lady. Come on. I love you in Jesus' name.
Come on, give a little big big hand for your time. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. How many can be here tonight? Amen. Yeah. Woo. Come on, make some noise. You can do better than that. Yeah. Amen. We, we are so uh, thankful that uh, you all made it out here tonight. And the Lord has a word for you. Tell your neighbor, God has a word for you. Tell your neighbor again, God has a word for you. Tell somebody else God has a word for you too. <laughs> Come on, take your hands and give a praise to Amen. Amen. Well, I guess tonight is a very transparent night. And uh, thank God for the first lady. Come on, we can do better than that. Amen. Pray me what I like to thank God. My Lord Jesus. Shout out to G Unit. But uh <laughs> thank God. <laughs> no, 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 no. Amen. Thank God for uh, all of y'all being here tonight and uh we give God the praise, the glory, the honor. Yeah. Amen for what he's doing. Tonight is is our uh our privilege. Uh, we, we, we thought it not to be robbery for myself and, and First Lady to come and begin to uh, minister uh, the Word of God and to share. How many say amen? Amen. Yeah. Because we have a lot of people uh, in, in New Generation Ministries, some are maybe single, some married, some in between, some you just don't know what you're doing. All right. You're just somewhere <laughs> up in the mix. How many say amen? Amen. 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 Uh, Brother Levi, if you can mute all the other mics, amen. Um, but uh, we, we come to give God praise and, and uh, I just can we share tonight can, can your pastor share tonight is, is that y'all sure y'all sure we can share can we go a little bit more deeper tonight but listen we, 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 this, this is something God put in my heart a, a while ago uh, and, and I was just kind of asking, asking God what could we do um how could we do what we do and uh, how can we just allow people to understand what God is trying to do in this season? How many say amen? amen. Come on, how many say amen? amen. And, and so what, what we try to do tonight is to examine where love really is yeah. and see how can we get it, how can we, when we get it, how can we keep, keep it, it. That's it, and when we keep it, watch this. How can we help others find it? Right. Amen. 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 Is, is that all right? Amen. 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 Clap your hands if that's all right. Amen. 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 So, amen. Tonight, I, I do have, amen, uh, a, a couple of things to share. And I want y'all to just get your word, word out real quick. I want to share a couple of things. And um, uh, uh, I, I want y'all to be open, to be honest. And raw. Amen. Now, of course, we, we know we have children, so our rawness has a PG-13 attached to it. Medium rare. But there is a way you can go around the, the bush, and uh, we can um, attack a couple of things here tonight. Uh, one, one of the things I, I, I've learned um, in just being saved... Um, is understanding first I have to love myself amen. before I can love somebody else. How many say amen? Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you got to learn how to love yourself before you can love somebody else. Amen. Um, I, 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 I got together a little, little list here that I, I, I wrote down to share. And I want you to go to um, Amos chapter 3. Okay? Amos chapter 3, and um, first thing is going to help me out with this. I told her just to flow with your, flow with your boy, flow with your boy, flow with your boy. Oh, yeah. Tell your neighbor beside you, say flow with me, flow with me, flow with me. Oh, oh yeah, I got to tell your neighbor right, say flow with me, flow with me. Amen, amen. The book of Amos, uh, some of y'all probably say, Amos, we ain't going in a long time. Some, <laughs> if you haven't been in a long time, don't be, don't be afraid, say Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amos, 
And um, I, I, I want you to I want you to see something just for us for a second. What does say? Amos chapter three. three. Levi, help me out a little bit with this, mic, just a tiny bit, man. Amos chapter uh, three. That, that's that's just a little bit. Amos chapter three. Okay, everybody have it. That's good. Amen. Amen. And I, I want you to look at Amos three three. Okay, Amos three three. And I give you a minute to get it. And and because uh, I, I want y'all to see some things, and if you have a notepad or something to write with, I want you to write this information down. You're gonna need this. By the time this is over, we're going to redefine love tonight. Amen. And we're gonna find out exactly why is it seem to be such a strange word. How many say amen? amen. Amos chapter three, verse three. We have to say amen. Amen. It says can it asks a question. Okay. Can two walk together except they be what? Agree. Your, your translation may say, how can two walk together unless they agree or except they agree? How many have heard this scripture before? Amen. How many have you heard it a million one time? The, the, the first thing, and, and, and I want to kind of help the singles out for just a second. And then we're going to be transparent to go into the married couples. The, the first thing you have to understand, you got to find out who you are. Right. First, yeah. you cannot examine somebody else without first examining yourself. Paul said, examine or consider your ways. That's what Paul said. Because uh, before we can take heed and examine somebody else or take heed to... Um, Look at somebody else in a different light, uh -huh. especially with, with you all that are single. How many singles do I have in here? You're single. You're single. You're not. You're not married. You're single. Okay. You're single. All right. Uh, how many of y'all single and you're happy about it? Okay. Are y'all lying? How many? How many of y'all single and you're looking? You're looking. Okay. Brother, you are 42 years married strong. Okay? <laughs> here's, here's my question Here's my question tonight my, my question tonight is When you are searching for love What's the first thing that comes to your mind? The first thing that comes to your mind Should be number one Am I up to the challenge Of, rede of redefining myself Redefining myself Meaning because everybody is not, we live on the air now. Okay, let's give God praise for that. Amen. 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 Am I up to the challenge of changing some of my bad habits? Amen. Deal with it. Deal with it, guys. Ooh. Amen. Because not everybody is going to want to be in love with your bad habits. I mean, I'm telling the truth here. And some of my, my married couples, y'all know what I'm talking about, especially because. Everybody has habits. We are, my, my, my father, which is, other words, he always said, we are creatures of habits. Okay? And I don't care how safe you are, everybody has good and bad habits. But when you're looking for Mr. or Mrs. Wright, are you sure that that person is going to accept your habits? Whether good or bad. How many say amen? amen? But when the Bible in Amos, when it says, can two walk together, let's say agree. Then I love it. Look, look at verse um, look at verse 4. This, this is where it gets real interesting. Verse 4 says this. Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he hath taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth? Where no gin is for him. Shall one take up a snare from the earth. And have taken nothing at all. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city. And the people not be afraid. Shall there be evil in the city. And the Lord hath not done it. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. But he revealeth his secret. Unto his servants the prophets. How many say amen to that? Amen. That's your example about walking in agreement. 
Because first of all, any relationship for my single ladies and gentlemen, you cannot try to fall in love with someone that is not in total agreement with your spirituality. Right, 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 right. Had an interesting conversation with uh, uh, Elder Hannah uh, today uh, about a couple and 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 uh, about how they're trying to work some things out. And, it's, and they have two different religions. Am, am I right? Two different religions. Impossible to do. Totally. Why? Why is it impossible? Simply because the beliefs are different. And the house will be torn apart from top to bottom. Somewhere along the lines, somebody is going to have a breaking point. And that spiritual uh, uh, infriction in the home is going to cause their marriage to be succumbed by the enemy. Why does light have a lust for darkness? Because you, you, you gotta understand, we as children of light uh -huh. have a pure fantasy for evil. Yeah. You ever heard somebody say, uh, why do you good girls why like bad boys? Bad. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Why well, do fools fall in love? It, it, this is this is some of the things that, that we got. It, it, it's, it's like taking it, it's an issue even within the church because we get saved and then we lose our mentality because we fall in love with something completely opposite than who God created us to be. We get to the point where we even so crazy we will substitute our anointing to satisfy the flesh. All right. Amen. Amen. Woo. Amen. Oh, Amen. Go for it now. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> Amen, praise the Lord. One of the things he said, why does light sometimes have a lust for darkness, is the ability to be able to hide. A lot of times when people don't, or individuals that seek, seek, seek in love, or searching for that spouse or significant other, sometimes they find it in someone that's not like them because right. it gives them the ability to not accept that's who they really are. Right. So a lot of times that's light true. can find hot, hidden, you can hide light mm -hmm. in darkness. Right. When, it, when it succumbs, even though you can see it, mm -hmm. but it won't be that obvious. Right. So that's why. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I, I agree with you. Somebody say amen. amen. So, so, so as, as single men and women of God, you have to understand that though you're single, everything that looks shiny ain't necessarily wow. yes. oh. All right. Oh, y'all quiet. Yeah. See, cause, see, see, look, look, check this out. As a pastor, I'm trying to figure out why do I counsel people that, that are saved and anointed got the Holy Ghost but they fall in love with somebody from the street. I'm, I'm trying. Because I don't understand how if God gives you a revelation and God says, wait. Right. God specifically says, don't make a move. Wait. And I'll show you. I'm about to show you all scripture. I'm going to give you all some scriptures to back everything up. Wait so he can give you the person that is best fit for you. And not a person that is going to give you, watch this, temporary or 5% right. when a real spouse is supposed to give you 100%. Yeah. Yeah. No such thing as 50 50. Amen. Yeah. 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 Oh, y'all quiet. Oh, I, I, I need a lot. <laughs> Go to 1 Corinthians. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 7. All right? 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We're going to be bouncing around a little bit tonight. It's Valentine's Day. Tell your neighbor one more time. Say, neighbor, I love you in Jesus' name. I love you in Jesus' name. But it's about to get wrong and ugly. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 7. Okay? This is for singles and married couples. Okay? First Corinthians chapter 7. First day, can you read this when you get it? Starting at verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. Are you, not, are you in 2 Corinthians? Oh, I'm in 1st. Sorry. That was 1st. 
First, first Corinthians, chapter 7. Yeah, second Corinthians. I was going to like that, though. Amen. Amen. I'm about to say, yeah, we're for all that right there. Now concerning the things wherefore ye wrote unto me. Now, now hold, hold This is Paul talking. Okay? It's Paul talking to the church of Corinth. Go ahead. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Amen. Oh my God. Read that one more time. <laughs> it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Go ahead. Amen. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. To avoid what? Fornication. To avoid what? Fornication. Oh. Sin. For your after church hookup people. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Uh, see, read that one more time for us, Amy. Verse 2. Nevertheless, uh -huh. to avoid fornication. It's not good for you to touch something that don't belong to you. Amen. See, Truth. here's where we go wrong. Uh -huh. You cannot keep thinking in your mind that God don't see what you do after service is over. My, my, my. Oh. Or when there is no service, you know, that Monday through Saturday type of ordeal, right. and you creeping all over, and then we come to church and we, we go for it. Right. But God just said, it's not good for you to touch a man, especially to avoid fornication. Yes. Right. What is fornication? Outside of marriage. Outside of marriage. Outside of marriage. You creeping before you can even understand who you are. <laughs> and and every uh oh, here's where it's going. Here's, here's where it's going to get real crazy. Every single time you sleep with somebody else, you're robbing your spirit and you're robbing yourself of great anointing and you're robbing yourself of great integrity because now everybody have a piece of you. All right. So when Mr. or Mrs. Wright come along, you have nothing to give but shattered pieces. Ooh. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Verse 2, nevertheless. Nevertheless, uh -huh. to avoid fornication, yes. let, let every man have his own wife, uh -huh. and let every woman have her own husband. Uh, okay, let every man have his own what? Wife. Come on, people, what does it say, class? Wife. 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 And let every woman have her own husband. husband. Stop lusting after somebody else's mate. Yeah. Oh. Oh. All right. I'm talking about church. I know y'all couldn't handle this. I know I'm going on. Because a lot of people, especially in the kingdom of God, we get so friendly with each other's mate that we lose consciousness right. and forgetting right. that person is, is not single. They take it. I don't think a, I don't think a woman for any should have private conversations with a married man. Well, I guess I must have said the wrong thing. No, you're right. Or vice versa. I don't. I don't think being married to my wife, I should have a, a female best friend. That's right. Oh, that's that's right. Yeah. Wow. That's really good. Outside. That's my. She's my best friend. Right. How in the world can I be answering the phone and, and, uh, and having random conversations with women? Yeah. And I said, Oh, oh, babe, don't don't trip. That's just my friend. That's your friend. <laughs> And, and I know, first thing, I know you believe the same way. Far as, because we we we've had this conversation before, and sometimes you have to learn. One thing I had to learn to do is to not let my good be even spoken of. Oh, see, I'm gonna just cut cards, man. I'm just cut cards now. Because sometimes what I was doing in our marriage, we've been married for ten years, and what I was doing in my marriage, in our marriage, was I would say, you know what? I, as a pastor, see, you gotta watch the trick of the enemy. Yeah, right, right, right. Because the enemy, remember Jezebel is either male or female. Yeah. 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 Even though it's not like that, mm -hmm. the looks, that's why the Bible said, never let your looks be evil spoken of. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. Don't let what you say be evil spoken of. Don't let your conversations be evil spoken of. I got to make sure, that's why in this season, as a husband, uh oh, I'm going to get Lord heavy, but as a husband, I can't afford to let my good be evil spoken of. Uh oh, as a, and, and, 
wife too. As a, explain that because some, some people don't understand. As a, as a wife too, you know, as women, sometimes we men become dependent on us. Right. And as a married wife, they really become dependent, but we have to learn how to separate right. uh -huh. ourselves from a lot of single men because they come and they want advice uh -huh. on how can approach a female or how to date them. And you'll find yourself giving them advice, but you only can give them advice on how it was, how you was courted and how you were dated. Right. So some sometimes, and I'm not saying all men, but just to cover yourself, sometimes men don't know how to separate that. So when they find out what you like or or wow. how you was dated, or you know, what's your favorite fragrance or color, and things like that. Them using that information to pursue someone else, now they are using that information to pursue yeah. 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 for other uh, married people who tries to attach themselves to you. Yeah. Looking for that freedom. Looking for the freedom or an outlet. To be, oh, I go to him or her to relieve stress, or they're easy to talk to, or I like their personality. Oh, y'all get what I'm saying? I, I, I like the way they are. You, you have to understand there's a big difference. And don't give the enemy the, it, the power or, or the or the wrong way to be able to say, listen, when you find out that person is married, look, I know, look, I know you're cool, but look, we, we, we say mutual from a distance. Because I don't want my integrity to be in question either. Uh, so so, so the, the, the first priority is to make sure you understand that there is a thick line between our relationship. Amen. I mean, that you can't cross. I, I, I know from my, from my married couples, uh, likewise, uh, as we uh, just mentioned about having, having friends, the first thing in relationship to any good relationship is having a good friendship. Right. Yes, sir. Amen. Well, yes, sir. You guys have something to build on. You, if you don't have a good friendship, you can't have no relationship. Amen. She was my friend before she was my wife. Thanks for God. I had to learn how to kick it with her on a one-on-one -on -one basis without people around. Let me say this. When you are dating, you don't date everybody. You date one individual. Amen. You don't need to call that up. Hey, girl, what you think about him? What you think about him? Because you don't know. Your girlfriend may like him. You got to learn how to get the goods while it's good. Keep the good for you. Let them. <laughs> but you got to understand, you're dating one person. You can only be in love with one person. You can't be in love with every one person. Only one person should have a private right to your privacy of your heart. Yes. One person, one individual, where you can get the chance to know. And even if you're dating in here tonight, I want to tell you, don't be rushing to get married. Uh -huh. All right. Uh -huh. Take your time. Y'all Yo, quiet. <laughs> because we so quick to hit the altar. Yeah. And you don't even know what you're marrying. Yeah. My, <laughs> my philosophy, and I know the people, how many of y'all been, and I know y'all been married, how many have been married over 10 years? 10 years of money, you've been married over 10 years of money, okay. They will tell you, you don't know a person True. until after you said I do. Yeah. Oh, 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 you can spend a night over their house right. for six months straight. Right. But it's something about I do that releases the true identity of who they are. How many of y'all are talking to? You? Whether you've been married 10 years, two years, five years. Come on, how many know I'm talking to? You? And for my, my married couples, how many know you didn't realize who you married until after you said I do? You're like, oh, I didn't know you knew this. <laughs> oh, I know you was this dirty. I I shave in the kitchen sink. Huh? I know you gargle over and scope at the by the food. I know you. Girl, I know you. Your feet is like knives on the sheets. Some of y'all, some of y'all women say the same thing. Boy, I know this boy put his drawers all over the place. I Boxes all over, just hanging, just we ain't getting. And some of y'all love it. You just love it. And that's not a bad thing. Because at the end of the day, you have to love the person for who they are. Yeah. And learn how to go together. I do a lot of things my wife can't say. Oh. 
Can't say, I mean, really, can't say. But that's 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 us. That's you, you see, that's I, and she does a lot of things. Like she she she's a, everybody knows she's a shoe fanatic. Yes. So I don't like <laughs> when I come in the house and and our room. You know, you gotta cut the lights on because if you don't, you're gonna step on something about four. It feels like a knife <laughs> driving through your feet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but 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 I learned how she's into the makeup and all that. That's her thing, and I'm into a lot of stuff as well. But we learn how to grow. It grew on us. Yeah. You have to learn how to grow with your man. Yeah. Grow with the person who you're dating. Try to find out what's the what what some of the things that you have to change. Like, listen, before we can even go down this altar, here's a list of things that you need to work on. And I'm gonna be honest. Here's a list of things I need to work on. Yeah. And accept them for who they are. Don't try to play, oh, here, here, I got, you didn't change this, this, and this. And I say, wait a minute, I'm not going to change my flaws. You got to learn how to change together. How many say amen? Come on, how many say amen? amen. Go to 2 Corinthians, real quick. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Y'all having, having a good time? Y'all all right? Yeah. 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 I'm, gonna get your, I'm just laying the foundation. They will be here all night, but I'm laying some foundation for y'all. Somebody say amen. 2 yeah. Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 14. Very familiar. Some of y'all can preach this if y'all really wanted to. I'm never some of y'all just start preaching this song. I just can't sit back and can't wait. As long as y'all living with y'all preaching, I ain't no problem. <laughs> and my man was dead. Y'all get that. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. 14. Be ye not unequally yoked. That's right. Together with unbelievers. Uh-oh. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness, and what com what communion have light with darkness? Be ye not unequally yoked. You can't be saved today and talk about I'm in love with a stripper tomorrow. Oh, oh I'm a, I'm I'm in love I'm in love with them because I know um he or she gonna change, they're gonna change my chain. God will get a hold of it. No, no. Pray and ask God to send you somebody who is right. You gotta be able to see. Thank you so much. You gotta be able to discern, discern what it is, what spirit it is that's behind an individual. Amen. I don't care if they can drop, pop, and lock it. It don't matter. If they're not saved, they shouldn't be on the shoulder. Woo. Watch this, ladies. If the man can't worship with you, he can't fellowship with you. Because the man is an example of what true worship really is. Uh oh, y'all quiet now. If my wife, which was recently in, 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 in the pain, you know, some of y'all know we was getting on this whole flu stuff and all of that, she don't know, and I don't have to boast or brag about it, but while she was ailing, my job was to pray. Oh my, oh my, it's the prayer. Not one away. See, see, what gets me, and this is for us men of God, what gets me, we're saved in church, but we ain't saved at home. See, if I don't pray for her, God will hold me accountable because God's going to say, her healing will come if you pray. Amen. Oh, why do you, uh -oh. Why do you think God made something called order where he says, I'm going to create Adam first? Because nothing happens until Adam understands what his job is in the kingdom. And my first ministry is not new generation. My first ministry is my house. Amen. Woo. I can't come up here and clean the buff off the chairs and do all that in my house a mess. That's right. <laughs> I can't come and love on you guys and not show my wife no love. That's, that's being hypocritical. Amen. That's, oh my God. How can I tell you I love you and never say it to my wife? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying, don't, 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 don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I'm no, I don't live in a glass house. Because trust me, your bishop have issues. She'll tell you, my wife, I got issues. Don't go to plan. I got issues. <laughs> but one thing I do understand is God is working with my issues. All right. And the more I allow him to work with my issues, the more close I am with my wife. Right. But one thing I had to understand with, with my wife, I had to understand who I am so I can understand who she is. She had to understand who she is so she can understand who I am and it brought both of us together. But as an Adam to her and my children, I must make sure everything is set. 
This is why, ladies, I tell you, you cannot mess with somebody who doesn't worship God. Yeah. Amen. Right. Oh, he's saved. How is he saved? Because he confessed to be Christian? Christianity is his choice of religion? Or is he saved by the renewing of his mind? Because if the brother only thinks about sleeping with you, his mind is not in Christ. Oh, my God. If he has an issue, if every time he or she, this is for male or female, every time you're supposed to be mate, have an issue with coming to worship with you, that should throw up red flags. Because how can I trust you to pray for me in the middle of calamity in my life? That means I can't spiritually trust you. And whoever you can't spiritually trust, you can't be with. Amen. Woo. Because when I, oh God, can we go a little bit more deeper here? Amen. When you say I do, that means I do give you everything. Amen. When I look at that pastor and he said, will you take Terry to be a lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold in sickness and in health, for rich or for poor, to death do us part. That is an oath for life. It's not a game. It's not something that you just pick up and sit down. Or say, I'm going to love you today, but I'm going to hate you tomorrow. Even if you have the issues with your mate, never have an issue to the point where it turns to pure hatred. Amen. It's a lot of stuff I know that disappoints her that I do, but it never comes to the point where pure hate. Because if it was true, we wouldn't be together today. True. You may talk a lot of stuff, but pure hatred maybe goes a long way. I'm talking about pure hatred. That's why I got to be careful of who you have soul ties with. Because many of you all in here can't have a successful relationship because your soul is entangled with too many other people. Uh -oh. That's why I tell people all the time, and I listen to my leaders, I listen to some of y'all, even priests to your neighbor all the time about not sleeping with everybody. Uh oh. Uh oh. Because you're into, you're, you're, Lord, I gotta remember, I got kids in here. You're, you're, uh, your spirit is transferred in intercourse to the next individual who you're sleeping with. And vice versa. Their spirit is straight. So whatever they have Jesus. is now on you. But, 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 now is it only on you a little bit? You got double what they have. Yes. Yes. So it'll take you longer to get rid of. Am I right about that? Yes. Take it on. Now, 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 now first lady has been to uh, 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 many issues uh, in her life. So have I. And so have everybody else in here. Yes, sir. When it comes to finding love. Sometimes I sit back and I be in utter amazement about her upbringing and some of the stuff that she has told me I'm, I'm in like jaw drop because it's hard to find love but you never received it yeah. or only received it but so far so right. much right. and so you're looking for something that you never had or only had a portion of right. so you're trying to master something that you never received right. Right. that's like getting a degree from a school that you never attended not one class oh, yeah. you, you see what I'm saying it's hard to do how many say that amen. Amen. so God says wait a minute just like like natural, like spiritual, we cannot be unequally yoked. Now, now look, look at verse 14 again. Read that for me. One more time, verse 18. Verse 14. Uh, uh, chapter 6, verse 14. Y'all still there? Yep. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Uh -huh. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Uh -huh. And what communion hath light with darkness? Well, communion. Anybody know what the word communion means? Communion. Think, think about it. communion. Communion. Come on, real quick. Just yell it out. Come, Come together. together. Somebody says something else. Union. Y union. Huh? Covenant. covenant. Light cannot have proper covenant with darkness. Amen. Okay? Amen. Even in, um, in your marriage, we got to make sure that we keep all communion equal. Yeah. Because communion is another form that forms the word communication. Yes, sir. Because communion means communication. Communication is the first priority in any relationship. Woo. Because if you don't have commu open communication, your relationship is not going to last. Uh, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's communicate. Somebody say communication. 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 Write, write this out. Can I give you something to write that? Write, write this out. Write this out. Without communication, there will be no relationship. Oh, 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 thank you, Holy Ghost. Without communication, there will be no communion. Amen. Without communication, am I right about that, Brother? There will be no communion. 
So because we gotta have communication. Right? I gotta make sure I can meet with her every day. I cannot come in my house and not acknowledge my wife. Ooh. She hates it when when she's and I had to check something recently happened and she know she know I'm right on this. You know I'm right, you gotta give my kudos on this, okay? <laughs> with uh I was on the phone, sometimes I'd be on the phone uh, before I pick her up from work. And she'd get in the car, when she gets in the car, I'm still on my phone. So for a while she was, she didn't say anything, just, you know, hey, you know, this, this is kind of crazy, you know, whatever. You know, um, make it to me, it's fine, I'm sweating, I'm fat, it's all good. Um, <laughs> and, um, so as I get in, as I'm just talking on the phone, I'm just... You get, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, leave me in such and such place, so yeah, I'll be on to preach for you, whatever my communion with whoever I'm in communion with at that time is taking up precious time that should, been, should have been redirected to my wife. So one day, she, she didn't say anything, but I can tell something was wrong. Now, I knew I didn't say anything to her. I didn't do anything to her. So why do I hear hissing on the side? <laughs> it's called, you know what the side is. Y'all know what it is. Yeah, that's a, that's a Come on, y'all know what it is. How many know where I'm born with this? Right? <laughs> so I'm like, what's wrong with you? All right, all right so I'm going to call you right back. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Well, I have to never call this person. <laughs> so long story short, I realized this is when I realized I'm supposed to have acknowledged my Eve while while I'm in the car because the whole time I was having communion with somebody else, and that time is up with my Eve that I haven't seen all day is in the car. Right. Right. Because Treating your spouse like he or she does not exist, meaning there is a lack of communion going on. Yeah. So now what I do, I still be on my phone prior to her getting in the car. When she gets in the truck, now I'll call you back. I'll see you in a little bit. And I say, how was your day? It's the little things that mean the most. I know it's Valentine's Day and you can give all the balloons and the flowers, but baby, if you don't do that on a daily basis, this day does not make up for all 364 other days. Because it's all about communion. And I believe that women like to have communion with their husbands. And am I right about it? I mean, so explain that. I know I don't want to overtalk you. Let's go. Because it's, 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 it's communion. Because we have an issue with this. Yeah. Tell them about our issue with this. I mean, it's not like you want to absorb someone's time because you want your own time too. But it's just the fact of acknowledging someone. Right. You know, a lot of times we take spouses and we take time for granted. Sure. And we have to understand that, you know, the next minute, the next second is not promised to none of us. So if God allowed us to depart, go to work, go to school, whatever we do throughout uh -huh. our day, and he allowed us both safely to meet back up. Uh -huh. Why not at least speak and say hi? Right. How right. was your day? Right. You, you know, and then you can go and about your right way. But to me, that's a, a fact of acknowledging, like, you know, I'm glad to see that you made it through your day. Right. And even though your day might have been hard, mm -hmm. I'm here to make it just a little bit lighter by at least acknowledging you here. I mean, a lot of times we don't understand the world is hard whether you are working in the field, whether you're a stay-at-home mom, and sometimes you don't feel as appreciated as you should, or the kids might have tapped on your nerves just to the last pull. So just sometimes to have someone to care enough to acknowledge how you feel it and how you're doing at the end of the day is is awesome and and vice versa you know i'm a big stickler you know i'm on a a four ten schedule where i work four ten hour days and i'm off i'm a big stickler on you know because we both are full-time parents and sometimes we ripping and run i'm not full-time parents but work full-time as well and ripping and running i'm a big stickler is you know when a man comes home i try to you know beautify myself yeah. fix a little right. something or offer to take them out to dinner and stuff it's just about acknowledging that that individual was going all day 
and dealt with the world all day. But now when we're together, it's our sanctuary. It's about us. It's about our family. It's about our world. So that's why when he was doing that, I felt like it was a disrespect to our time. Right. Like, I didn't see you all day. And yeah, I might have slept with you last night. You might have dropped me off this morning. But anything could have took place. I could have been disrespected today. Or I could not have felt my best today or anything. So the first thing I'm, I'm like, it's almost like, and I don't want to say this like we're animals or anything like that. But it's like, you ever seen like when you leave your pet or something and they come and you come home and they at the door and they waited. Can you imagine how the animal would feel if you open the door and you just kick them out the way and go on about your right way? They doing that because they want to acknowledge that it's been hard all day. It's been lonely all day. And I'm so happy to see you because you are my refuge from all of this. So just like he do, does that, I even had to um, do that on my myself. When I'm off from work or if he has to go out and, and preach or whatever, when he come in, I say, you don't want to come home looking at no rag and smelling no chicken grease and everything like that. And I even teach my girls, I say, you know, when they're home from school and, you know, for their vacations or whatever and I'm off and I tell them you know about noon or whatever thing and rain around all day I say okay get yourself together get the house tidy up because don't no man want to go home to no mess and I expect the same thing um, and we have established that yeah, and that's a rule in our house. In our household. You cannot walk around with pajamas on all day or anything like this. Yeah. We can't just do that. And let me, let me <laughs> speak about now, now, because I know some people think a little bit different. <laughs> but but I believe, and we, we both believe, that you always want to be appealing to the eye. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? If, 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 if I'm home and my wife has been gone all day, I'm not going to walk around with my boxes on, tank top. I mean, know. he can, but he know that I get off at a certain time, so fix it up. Well, we're going to clean it up. Beforehand, right. I'm going to make sure that the house is tight. Right, yeah. The best of my ability. Right, yeah. Y'all Y'all yeah. play for y'all, man. I want to make sure that one thing I'm a big stickler on, give me credit for this, I'm a big stickler or I don't like mess up beds. Right. I, I got an issue with it. Anybody like to say, am I the only one? No, sir. It's, it's something about a sheet that's like, oh, my God. 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 I don't, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm not talking about why you're in the bed. I'm talking about when you're coming home and the cover is off the bed. You, you know what I'm saying? Think about got the mattress showing. That makes you don't even want to get it. I'm not getting it. <laughs> Maria, I could have been the only person in it. I'm, I'm scared of me. I'm not getting it. But I'm going to make sure that that's straight. I would make sure, some, sometimes, sometimes, watch this, watch this. Sometimes, sometimes she will, she will pick uh, music on. She like uh, the the, the uh, scented candles, you know. Uh, uh, just make the home feel like a home. And 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 I, you know, it's such a more deeper appreciation for it. You you know, it, it makes and I believe it should be done on both ends. Yes, amen. And even for even for my singles, practice that now. If you don't know, practice that now. So so when whoever it is that you're dating or whatever God gives you the release to do so, they can get that that may can get accustomed to how you are. You don't stand for trash. Like I don't like this. I don't like, right. I, I don't like filth. I, I never be, before first lady became play. I never liked dating somebody that was dirty. No. <laughs> you, ever, you ever dated somebody that you went to that house and went, oh my God. I have, I'm not gonna lie. I, and I said, oh my God. I said, oh, this and this is this is for my people back in the day that had a two-way pager. Okay. <laughs> you can't even say. You know that, you know that? No. I'm talking about the pager. Where the lady will answer the phone and then show up, I'm talking about you make a good video. The sky, the sky, and I would make up something real good. Oh man, I gotta preach. I wasn't even preaching. I said, I forgot I gotta preach. I said, it's been real. I ain't never been back over the house. I, I, I ain't never done nothing since then. And, and, and so, God, and so, I just never could deal with Phil. 
Here's another one that may want to help you out. I always tell people, even today, you can tell how dirty a person is by their car. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. How many with me on that? How many with me on that? How many ain't with me on that? How many not with me on that? How many not with me on that? I don't care if you with me on that. I'm just saying. My thing is, now I'm not saying your car got to be spick and span. I'm talking about some McDonald's trash on the floor. I'm talking about you got the living room, dining room, and bedroom. That is just. Sure. My car down, and we're gonna go on a date. You gonna take me? You didn't even have five dollars to take it. You call Wiz? This is Wiz on Howard Street just to take it down there and have them. You know, and, these are some of the signs you wanna take. Give, give it up. I'm gonna say amen. amen. We, we have a pastor that's watching. Thank God for Dr. Herrick, my mentor. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Go to, go to Isaiah at chapter 41, okay? Isaiah chapter 41. If you have questions, we're going to ask some questions. If you got questions, write it down because we're going to want you to have the microphone here. We're gonna, I want you to ask some, We're going to tackle some stuff. Okay? Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. All right, so we're going to get to the question right after this scripture right here. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, okay? Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. I'm, I'm trying to get y'all revolutionized tonight. Like, really, for those of you who are dating, who are single, I'm trying to look at you, 4110, I'm trying to get you to look at yourself, and even my married couples, we're going to be stronger this year. 2013 is going to be a strong year yes. for love. Because love conquers all. Amen. Love conquers all. And it covers, uh, it covers all. A multitude of what? Sin. Of sin. I like it. Say it again. Sin. Of sin. She said, she took it right out of my mouth. Covers a multitude of sin. Can't be in love any sin, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Isaiah 41, 10, y'all have it? Yes. Go, go ahead, verse 8, read for us. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Okay, this is for my singles, by the way. Go ahead. Be not dismayed, uh -huh. for I am thy God. Don't be dismayed. God knows your longing and yearning for a mate. Okay? I will strengthen thee. I yea, will strengthen thee. Go ahead. Yea, I will help thee. I will help you kill your flesh. Yea, right. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I will make sure that you don't fall into the temptations of the world. Yes. Because being single in these days and times is very difficult. Yes. It, it is. How many, how many single people know? Come on, come on. Talk to me. It's, just, it, it's, it's, it's hard because... If you don't be so careful, it's you will find yourself caught up in some stuff. Yes. And then we pray. Now, y'all, listen, y'all got to be super holy to me. I've been here before. Yeah. Huh? Where you were single right. and, 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 and were saved and you fell. Yeah. Yes. And you got before God and you said, God, I need your help. And you fell again. Uh -huh. And you got before God. Come on, am I talking to some real people? Amen. It is not that you do it on purpose, meaning you do it to purposely offend God. It's just that your flesh is so weak. First of all, write this out. You got to watch out who you're hanging around. Amen. Uh -huh. Woo! Verse. Go ahead, because the Lord's Spirit is heavy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say something when he was talking about uh, marriage. Yes. And, you know, waiting for God and how he will hold you. Uh -huh. And, you know, a lot of, now it's like we're living in a day and age where marriage has become overrated. Yeah. Because the That's sacredness true. and right. the covenant of marriage has right. been yeah. broken. Yeah. Right. And I hate to get all political and everything like that, but when... When the covenant of God's word and marriage was ripped apart, mm -hmm. people don't deem it necessary because it's no longer considered godly. Right. So what we have to do is go back into the scripture and find out what marriage really is right. and bring back the sacredness and the holiness of what marriage is because that's why we have a lot of non-traditional families and shacking and things like that is because... Mm -hmm. Marriage is not what it was yes. when our parents was married Amen. or when we, some of us in here, was married. Now, because, you know, you can have men marrying men and women marrying men, men marrying men and women marrying women and right. 
parents signing their children to get married, or you right. can order a bride from across seas. Yeah. The whole covenant yeah. of marriage Ooh. has been broken. So that's why the ter and then it's broken first in the church. Yeah. When right. we started supporting right. these things right. and allowing right. these things. So that's why we have a high broken marriage in the church. We have a high fornication in the church and adultery and shacking right in the church. Right. is because the broken covenant of marriage started in the church. Right. So and, and, and now it's that. time for us to get it back right. and uphold our standard yeah. of what marriage is supposed to really be and not falling by the wayside of what's popular right. or what's lucrative right. and just go back to scripture and how God would end it. And I, and I think marriage is beautiful. Yes. Marriage is the most beautiful thing in the world, especially when you're married to the right person. The right person. Not the kid of darkness, but the child of the light. Light brings right. <laughs> and right is the light. How many say that? Amen. One, one, one of the things I, I, I say all the time, and this is for you wonderful single women of God. Boys shack. Right. Men marry. That's right. Boys check, men marry. Boys look for opportunity to say, let's play. Uh -huh. Pops. Right. Men, that's our Lucasa. That's our house. We, 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 are, we are protectors. That's what I'm saying. We are protectors. Of, I got to protect my family. Amen. My job is to make sure I protect my family, my wife, my children. I don't want to play. Oh, I can. Uh, we just live together now. Then we break up next week and I'm back in my own crib. I just had an interesting conversation with one person who, uh, who's married. He's married and still holding on to his house. I said, oh, I get it. So when you're mad and you feel like having one of your, one of your, 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 your confidants right. over. <laughs> One of your Delilahs come over, Delilah. you go over to your house. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. See, watch this woman of God and men of God that are single. You have to be careful of the setup. Be careful of the intent, the setup. And so we gotta re we, we do have to get marriage back the right way. Yeah, am I against homosexuality? Absolutely. Amen. Do I think the church has done a bad job of supporting it? Absolutely. Amen. We have supported this thing. This is why there's no anointing in the church like it used to be. Right. Because we're so apt to say, hey, you know, it's all right. Human is human. Right. No, no, they, no. They, everybody has a right. I don't think anything no. outside of the word of God should yes. have a voice. Amen. That's my, it's the spirit controlling it. Right. But, but because we so want to be a people's person. We want to be everybody's yes. friend. I don't condemn the homosexual. I never did. I condemn the sin. I love the person. I have homosexual friends. I have homo I have gay friends. Now I may not communicate with them on a regular. I'm talking about when I see them, it's cordial. I don't look upon them and throw my head up at them. I don't even talk about the sin. Right. I love them, hey man, what's going on? And some of you be surprised, just as thorough as I am. Uh -huh. I must have seen the new, new 21st oh, century. Yeah. But, but I, I, when, when it's time for conversations, and he asked me my opinion, I believe somebody uh, asked me, what, what, I think last summer, was it? If I were married them, uh, a lesbian couple. Mm. Asked me, would I marry them? And I said, absolutely not. I love you. Right. <laughs> Both of y'all, y'all love me to join the church. <laughs> See, because watch this. Right, right, if I can get you to where God is. Right, yes. 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 See, see, let's see. This is the problem with the church. We shut them away, forgetting that they have a soul. No, no, no. Come to church. I don't, you can hold hands and come up here. That's fine. As long as y'all do nothing explicit. But you, I don't care how you come. Just come and let the Holy Ghost move upon you. And the Holy I don't have to say nothing. The saints don't have to say nothing. Right. But one day, I believe the church of the living God will finally stand up with a voice and begin to institute the way marriage is supposed to be. Right. Yes. The way it ought to be. And, and I believe it's supposed to be happy. It's supposed to be a fulfillment of life. I'm telling you, if you find yourself the right, the right mate, you won't have a, 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 a day in your life 
where you couldn't be super happy, even if you and your mate going through it or going through certain situations, you still should say, you know what? It feels good to know that I don't even have to sleep alone. Because I'm going to tell you something off the bat. It's nothing like having a warm body beside you right now. Oh, y'all keep going. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. I was thinking like, oh, no, no. Trust me, you said it now because you don't have it because you're so accustomed to not having it. But, baby, it's fun when you do that. Amen. Amen. Because your fingers can only do but so much. <laughs> Because we've been busy playing foolish, nasty games with our bodies. And your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It is not mannequin when nobody said all these sexual toys, all this stuff that they put out there, all the, they said every two seconds, at least 10,000 people watch porn every two seconds. 10,000 people watch porn every Tuesday. That means one, two, somebody's watching porn. Right. One, two, somebody's watching porn. It's an even kid. That is more of the reason why we got so much sexual immorality in the world is because of stuff that comes on television. Yeah. 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 We, we was watching uh, 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 an event just last week, we were on, 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 and he was talking about the same thing. He was just talking about how all the sexual perversion is coming because of the things that's on television. When was the last time you watched television? And see that some of the stuff they call regular, some of the stuff that we call normal television will be considered porn back in the early days and, and before. Come on, how are we going to tell the truth right I mean, they're cussing on television. Yes, Sexual yeah. scenes on television. I mean, they make it on television. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your children consume yeah. that. Yeah. Even when you say, oh, that's just your uncle. For the people who are dating, everybody's somebody brand new. Everybody got different uncles, different aunts. <laughs> and then what I don't understand, we get mad when your child grows up, grows up to do the same thing. That's right. Because they have no example, especially when mom or dad are not being the greatest example. I tell my children all the time, they will tell you, I, they, I say, who's your boyfriend? Isn't daddy? Absolutely. Daddy and Jesus, that's the only boyfriend you're going to get. And I don't do certain things around them. I don't, and he, they, they have their they grandparents, I, I could I could cringe, but, but I know they love to do it. They bought my, they bought the girls, uh, what is that, the, uh, uh, but not an iPad, uh, uh, tablets. And I, and I said, oh, Lord Jesus. I said, Lord Jesus, I got to watch this. Because even though you don't be careful, you can type in little stuff and, and all this other stuff will show up. I was looking, I'm going to say this public out. The younger man, I'm here. Uh, they can't see me anyway, I got the money. Uh, so, uh, lady named Katy Perry. Oh, yeah. How many have ever heard of Katy Perry? She said the song. Some of y'all like it. Some of y'all like it. I know. I know that a friend of mine wrote that song. That I went to school with. He wrote the song. I kissed a girl and I liked it. Okay. Went to, went to a Christian school. We both went to the same Christian school. Same Christian school. And I went to see, because my girls were so into it. Because from a, you know, if you look at her, you say, oh, she's just some kid. You know, just cupcakes all on stage. You know, all the basic stuff. So I'm thinking about I'm sitting, I'm sitting on the, I'm sitting in the seat watching the movie. So I'm noticing like, okay, something don't seem right here. So I'm noticing that her her on her breast, her um it was it was like combs that were turning, that were squirting out like cream, like foam, and and the lollipops and you know, all that stuff that seems so kid friendly had a real meaning, a real meaning behind it all. And I'm sitting there cringing like, ain't this so, what an easy way to get a child sexually motivated by watching something that looks to be ice cream and cupcakes, but it had what I can't, but look like something else. Even with this Nicki Minaj, another one. Famous for having these characters. See how the enemy play? Using different characters. To, yeah, the music made. Yeah. I told one guy, I said, yeah, the beat is tight. Yeah, the beat, I like the little hook to it. You know, it's cool. I can, you know, I said, but, but, oh, 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 what she represent yeah. uh -huh. is something off the hook. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, teaching our young girls how to be whores. Yeah. Okay, I know you're I know. 
teach our young men how it's good to have multiple women. Amen. Amen. Ain't showing them that one out of five got HIV. Yeah. Right. There you go. Now, tell the people about, that's why I like people who work in the health field. They keep real. Don't tell the young men about chlamydia. Yes. Yes. Crabs, gonorrhea, yes. the herpes. And some stuff that you, that is no longer uh, sexual transmitted diseases. Now, what is it? That is a new name. Sexual transmitted, transmitted, uh, uh, something else. What's that? Who know that new name? Uh, uh, there's a new name to it now. They they trying to jazz it up a little bit more. But these these are some of the things that's happening. <clears throat> that's why the God. That's why God says, I want you to be careful. Hold, hold your peace. If you know you're going to be in an uncompromising situation or a compromising situation, don't put yourself in that type of position. If you know you can feel a love spirit, if you and him or you and her are talking and things of that nature, get out of there. Don't, get out of there. Walk away. Look, I'd rather hang around a group of people. No, like, you want to talk, we want to hang out. Oh, that's cool, but I can't go back to your place. Amen. That's good, right? That's what right. happened. Watch this. You know why? Because I know me. See, see, it's not that I don't trust you. I don't trust me. And if you know, you see, y'all don't keep it real with you. I'm trying to keep it real. If you know you can't hold yourself, why put yourself in danger? After a while, you get tired of being pit for the same sinful us. You, 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 you get, and if I'm not the second, come on, elders, I mean, y'all know. So after a while, God is like, you know what? I don't even hear you. Right. Your, oh, let you go. Who says God got to forgive you every time you get committed the same thing? Because after a while, that's not an accident. You're doing it on purpose. You're perfect. Oh, y'all. Yeah. Okay. okay. First time's a mistake. Which your neighbor said, be careful, be careful, be careful. <laughs> so the Bible says, what was the Bible says, hold yourself. Question. And, it, and, and you can come on up to the mic. For those of you who are watching this, thank God. Come on, let's give you a round of applause for those who are watching this. If you have a question, type it in. And we'll be honored to answer your question in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Um, all right, everybody know I've been asking that over eight years. Amen. 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 Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. The button right on the top. Um, there you go. Um, I've been asking over eight years, and I'll tell everybody Jesus is the only man that can turn holes in the housewives. All right. Yeah. Wow. And, but why do the saved men leave me alone even faster when they find out I'm accident? The worldly men, at least, you know, they stick around, take me a little bit. It's the saved men. They leave me alone even faster. Well, you be honest. Like, I really want to know what's going on. Like, you're supposed to be asking it too. You're going to be real. Right. You know, like, you're supposed to be asking it too. But I just got to the point where I'm content with being single. Probably like this time last year, and I'm just, you know, waiting on God because I see I do have a lot of issues that I thought that I was over or whatever. But it still bothers me that the same men are the ones that, like, okay, then they just, like, leave. Mm -hmm. Like, wow. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think, I think, and, and that's a great, come on, give it up for this day. I believe that many of us men that come to church are really spiritual stalkers looking for prey to we, we, we hide behind and, and help me out with this first thing we, we hide behind praise and we hide behind worship okay and we do it because we don't want people to see who we really are. Amen. Okay? And most men, because we have an issue with God, because remember, we as men are so hardcore, we don't want to turn and submit. Men always, we will always have a hard time submitting. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is, one of the key things men always say, that, that we, we want the good girls come to church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's 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 the same thing, man. Man. Come on, man. I uh, say, man. We know that's that's what I said. That's what I said. If you want a good girl, go to church. Okay. And and we think that they're naive. They think that the church women are naive. Uh -huh. They think that they are motherly and uh -huh. nurturing because the kind of game that they run in the church, they can't run that game on the street because a lot of the worldly women will run them. So they prey on the women in the church. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they succeed because the women don't really look at scripture and they become like desperate and needy. So they'll say, you know, well, that's my Adam or this and that and the other. But they don't realize that they just part of the prey. Right. And, 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 and a lot of times men, I mean, I'm not a man, mm -hmm. but I, only, I, I was uh, 
a person that was preyed upon before I was married in my old church by married and single yeah, men. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and I thank God that I had enough wisdom like, mm -hmm. wait a minute, you know, I ain't trying to go there. Right. You know, but it was almost like they they was looking for a closer connection. It's odd. They looking for a closer connection with God and they think they only gonna get that by getting a connection with a godly woman. Right. Yeah. So it's wow. very perplexed how the mind can comprehend that because how can you get closer with, to God by committing a right. sin right. against God? It, it just don't make sense. But right. that's how, you know, um, my mama did, if she watching me. But that's how she was able to explain it to me and that's why I wasn't able to fall prey to a lot of things that went on in the church was because she told me, you know, keep yourself focused on God. And a lot of men, save women, are attractive. You, I mean, it, it's just something about the anointing, and it's something about your freedom and your praise, and it, it attracts that spirit from different guys, and they begin to pray upon it. I mean, I, I we have talked or communed or whatever with even men of today that ask, you got any good looking women in your church? You got any single women in your church? Mm -hmm. And Because they, they don't think is to get me a good wife, I got to go to the church. And I, and then they take the woman out of the church. Right. And next thing you know, you where's sister so and so? And they was doing this and they was on the choir and they was ushering and you don't see them no more. And next thing you know, you they own frying chicken on Sunday for the man because he pulled that woman from out of the church. So it's a pray thing. And and then you gotta realize, remember too, all men that come to church aren't saved. Amen. Amen. That's the biggest thing. All men that come to church are saved. So you you, you got to watch the motives. Because any, anybody can praise and all that. But it could be just to get your divine attention. So it may not be just um, they really in love with Christ. That brother has a serious lust issue. Amen. That, that got to be destroyed. So they pray on the week. They, they, pray, on, they pray on the week. I'm sorry. Just to respond from what I know. You may want to use a... Um, can everybody um, hear me? No, they, they can't hear me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry this time, I'll save my questions after they done. But uh, what I've noticed and what I've been told, um, being a Christian woman and single, they say the best women, meaning, um, I don't know if I can say this word, F word. Yeah, but they say the freaks are in the church. They say the church girls are the worst girls. And I think that's why they come to church and a lot of even churchmen are attracted because they say, I can have the best of both worlds. I can have, you know, the, you know, the lady uh, in the streets, but, you know, and she's, yeah, mm -hmm. pretty, I'm, I can't say that for our kids, but that's pretty much, that's what I've been told, and that's why when I've not dated, but even thought about dating it, that's why they were like, okay, and when they really realized I was serious about my celibacy, they departed because they've been with so many women who said they were Christian and then gave in anyway, and it's just like, they set such a low standard, it's just like they expect every Christian woman to be like that, and when they realize you're really serious and you're actually a Christian woman and a believer, they leave because it's not what they expected. Right. So that's what I've experienced. Right. And, 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 and you gotta remember, come on, Mom, and you gotta remember, um, for, for the women, <laughs> for, for you one for you wonderful women, this is why you have to adhere to even the men of God that God places in your life um, to kind of help you and protect you. That's why as a pastor, and I told, I told my wife, I told some of y'all, I gotta protect you. As your pastor, knowing your spirit as a spiritual father, you can't date any old thing. Right. And also as a pastor and as a first lady, we see things that a lot of congregants can't see, can't see right. and a lot of visitors can't see. So a lot of times when we, we're not haters, or anything like that, it's because we can see things that that individual might can't see, might don't want to see, maybe naive to it, or whatever. So it's a lot of times like God put stern, for real, for real men in the church 
to be that e example, especially when that woman don't have maybe like a safe father or sure. something close like that. Yeah. Sure. sure. Yes, ma'am. Good old mother was. Um, my walk with God is, I've been working with God over 40 years. Yes. And I'm 63 years old. Oh, and when I met my husband and we was going together, I was a virgin. I was 25 when I got married. I was determined I would never lay down with a man. And back then it was just as hard as it is now. Yeah. But I was determined that I was to be married and I want to be holy, pure, and yeah, clean do it right. for my husband. Right. I only had right. one man in my life, and that's my husband. But my days, what did you wrong? And I sat in my book, even in this church. When the young girls come in here, they still gun hold. They really want the Lord. They really want to fall in love. But what they need to watch out for, Satan was sent a man, whether they married or not, in this church and in other churches to tear the woman down. All they want is your body. They don't love you. They, they tell you all this smooth talk. Once they get you pregnant, at 90% of the time, you will get pregnant. Amen. They talk all this smooth stuff. They pick you off. They kick you out of the church. You become just a nobody. They will go and find the next person. A single woman, she would do the same thing. She would come in and look for a pastor. <laughs> if you notice how they wear the t and I'm being honest, they are right. they be honest. They will wear the tight skirts. They will wear the blouses open, and they will stand right in front of the pastor, and they will talk all this smooth talk. But at the same time, they and I sit and I watch in this church. They have so much lust for the pastor, and what they do in in churches, they get close to the pastor's wife, so that they can get. Close to the pastor, and they would try me, and I'm the mother. They would try me, but they would realize that this mother don't like me. <laughs> That's really close to the pastor, and get them after they break up. Because if you look at, I'm not calling pastor names out, but ninety percent of the pastors here in Baltimore, all of them fell because of Jezebel spirit. Yes, that's it, my yes. Yes. What they say when they go in that line and they get up there and they say hallelujah. Yes. Notice they do like this. Did you see what she yeah. had on? Yeah. Oh, I can't stand this person. But what the pastor have to do, they have to be strong too. Mm -hmm. Because I know a lot of pastors, they don't understand the spirit behind a woman oh, because oh, they're oh, busy oh. preaching. Mm -hmm. no, that's right. And they don't understand yeah, really what they're right. really doing. So if everybody had their eyes open and really see, you, you can see. You can yeah. see that they're after you. Sure. A married man, he'll tell you that he's getting a divorce and it's a lie yeah. for the yeah. 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 Just so That's a good boy, the Just so show me the bed with yeah. me. Show me the papers. Tell me, are you taking a picture of children? Are your children living with you? Are you paying alimony to your wife? Because they, a married man, would never divorce their wife. They lie. They tell you that, and then you get the grinning. Woo, woo, woo. That's not of God. God will lead you to the man that's going to marry you. Come on, yeah. You will know that it's God. You will know that it's the Holy Spirit. You don't have no problem. Amen. 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 I, I want to say something before, before, uh, since I've just come. Uh, you know, one of the things, uh, if I can flip it too, I will also say there's been good men that's been brought down. I mean, yeah. good, uh, yeah, men yeah. brought down by. Yeah. Crazy women. Yes. <laughs> and in the church, I've seen, I know right. one guy Amen. that, that uh, recently was uh, years ago, 
and and uh, had a good. I mean, had a scholarship doing very yes. well. I got hooked wow. up. Lady in church, she was a screamer, praise her, shout her, jump her the whole time. That's just I had her eyes on him mm -hmm. and brought him down. Now the man went from going to school yeah. from being a doctor to a security guard yeah. and all type of stuff. All that because you'd be surprised of what that spirit can do that will bring that person's character down. And that, that's just the judgment is a hook to, to bring it down. Right. And, 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 and right. It pulls out. One thing I will thank God for, and in my case, I thank God for having strong men around me. Because I just had a, I think, was it, uh, it was, when we met, uh, Tuesday, it was a Tuesday night, we had a, a, a meeting and, and, um, just a brief meeting, just, just for one second, one, just, just one second, and, uh, the men and I just got a chance to kind of vent, and I, and, and, you know, we begin to see what the enemy was trying to do, and, and I said, you know, one thing we got to make sure we do, and, and that the main court hold to this, is to block that spirit that tries to make his entry. Hello. You, you know, so you gotta gotta make sure you have it. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. I just had one thing to say. Yeah. And you and you know, for the women, you know, especially Christian women, and a lot of times they say a woman should know her place and not speak out of turn. But one thing that I encourage, you know, any woman, if you you know, to speak up on is your family, uh -huh. your marriage, your children. Right. Amen. You know, a lot of people, you know, they judge first ladies or married minister wives and things like that because they say, oh, but he can't have counsel with women and he can't talk with women and invite to women. But you, if nobody else is going to take a stand, yes, you cover yes, your spouse yes, in prayer yes, and yes. you cover them in public. You know, that's something, you know, because, you know, being a pastor's wife, you know, we was married before he was a pastor. You know, and I thank God that we had a spiritual connection. And I know my husband, and I know my husband's shortcoming. My trust lies with my husband, not with individuals. So I don't owe anybody kind of like anything. You know, so you never, and men, you know, when you see a, a brother getting a little too chummy with your female and your wife, you say, wait a minute, dude, you know, back up on your face. You have a right to speak up for your marriage and to speak up for your family. And all the time your spouse might not agree with it, but that is your right. Because you have to be the eyes when their eyes might sometimes be clouded. And they might have to be your eyes sometimes when your eyes is clouded. So don't get, you know, timid or anything like that when it comes up to speaking up. And then you, you know, you speak up on the behalf of their character when people try to speak you know, make their good be evil spoken of. You say, no, no, no. I know that person, and I wouldn't have married a person like that. Right. So, you know, I just encourage the married couples in here, don't right. feel ashamed like you speaking out of pocket when you taking up for what's yours, what God has given you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 what I was saying about even personal space. I'm married, everybody knows it. But I would even go to church and see women just come and be in my husband's space and not even speak to me. I was just not what I was going to say, actually. But um, even not speak to me, but go to my husband. And I even had to check them. That's my personal space. Right. You know, right. hi, brother Tony. Hi, how are you? You know, but if you can't even speak to me and give me the same love, uh -huh, uh -huh. don't go to my man. Right. <laughs> but yeah. but uh, as far as what she was saying, as far as the god godly men coming um, to you and not... Um, not wanting to stay around you mm -hmm. is uh, because you know a lot of people in the church have preached about or there's a thorn in her paul say there's a thorn in my flesh right. and they take that thorn and they want to run with it right. you know and not really dissecting what the word of god was right. saying right. they'll come and they want to like you said you know they, they have a form of godliness but deny the power right. they want to go into church and, and and like that bishop said hide behind the worship hide behind the prayer sure. but they want to find that open door right so that they right. can other children out of wedlock? Yes, I do. But it was something about that sex. <laughs> Y'all don't mind. I'm my kids. I can say this is my kids. Mm -hmm. We cool. But it was something about that union. And a lot of a lot of um, defaults will come before. A lot of defaults will come before that. Sure. 
to try to take um, away what God really has planned for you in the first place. They'll try to dim your light and they'll try to, um, you know, damage your spirit as a word of God, you know, what have you. So I would encourage um, the sister also just to stand strong and allow God to continue to use you, stay in his presence, and allow God to continue to purge you. That's right. That's good. I, I, want to, I want to show you. Something I want to say, and I'll be sure. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, one of the things we have to all take into consideration and understand, okay. that is a desire that God gave us, a natural desire. Right. right. So telling people to constantly fight it, mm -hmm. you cannot do it on your own. God gave right. you that desire. Same, 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 same. He wants to use it for his glory. Right. Right. So we have to right. trust him right. to go. help curb that desire. Right. Um, right. The other thing I wanted to say is that when women mm -hmm. are looking for husband. Yeah. The Bible said he defined the white thing. Oh, right. 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 So it's the man that should be looking, the woman should be praying. Right. 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 Yes. When, before I married my husband, and this is my second marriage, I wasn't saved the first time. Go ahead. I asked God to give me a man mm -hmm. that didn't have children oh. or a man that had grown children. Because I understood who I was, I knew what I wanted, and I knew what I wasn't going to accept. So God blessed me with a man that didn't have any children, didn't want any children, never been married before. So you have to know what you want. First, know who you are, know what you want. And the last thing I want to ask, and this is a question, with so much, and I've, I've, I've seen a lot in, in churches the years I've been saved, with so much in the church, I've seen guys come in, they get married to a sister in church. Time goes on, they break up, yeah. they divorce, uh -huh. another sister in the church. Yeah. They get married, they break up, mm. they divorce, another sister in the church. Oh or he may bring this one in the church, right. and I'm speaking real, real life stories. Right. He bring this one, you get married, break up, you get divorced. The problem I have, and I'm asking you what your belief is, is that if the pastor in the church continues mm. to do premarital counseling with this guy and all these different women. You know this man's spirit, right. but you continue to condone right. this right. foolishness. As the pastor, you have set a precedent yes. for the men in the church to let them know it's okay. okay. I yes. accept this. Yes. So anything you want to bring because I want you in a position, yes. then this is setting a precedent. So you're setting an example for people to follow. And how can you say what you or you can preach holiness mm -hmm. when you are allowing all of this other foolishness? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think after a while, the order got to be set even yes. harder. Yeah. And that person, in that case, the only thing he should be doing is sit, sitting and just hearing the word, word of God. God because there's no help in that brother until his spirit gets emptied out and right. Because if not, he's going to make a dangerous mistake. The only thing he's really doing is destroying himself. He's not just destroying others, but at the end of the day, he's destroying himself. So I, my take on that would be for that brother just to get all the word that he can, just sit and just soak bask and soak. Right. Somebody just said that who soak right, just soak up in the presence yeah. of God, so that they can be, you know, restored, rejuvenated to be able to then find themselves first. Yeah. It's kind of like restart the whole process all over. Right, right, right. We start, you know, find themselves first and then you know move on, you know, from from there. And 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 uh, that, that, that's my take. Let them just set be restored. And, 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 and be restored. <laughs> yes, sir. Big in training, Freddie White. Yourself first, yes, right. Now, I, I had this problem with my wife at first, but she don't got no. She just got good with it, cause in my recovery, I was taught to love me, right? It's not the point. I didn't care about her feelings, 
But I didn't have time to babysit them because I didn't even know my feelings. Right. Right. So I never, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still this way right now today with everybody, you know, anybody in general. Right. I don't care um, how you feel it at times because you never know how I'm feeling. Right. right. So therefore, I got to, you know, the change have to come with me as far as getting to try to uh, understand your feelings and your situations and all that. Sure, sure. So the thing is, how do you become better with the yeah with that with that mm -hmm. at the same time of trying to be the loving husband or you know the the, the, the kind parent because even with my kids at times I don't even care how they feel because I don't I don't put their emotions and feelings with mine because mm -hmm. mine if I put them together who knows what might happen with me mm -hmm. you know because um I have to. You know, balance my feelings and, and, and emotions out first so, so, to, to try to deal with somebody else. So, how you, how, how you, how <laughs> you, amen. Um, you know, not putting, Good question. not putting too much up because I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to. Go ahead. We didn't have that talk. But, um, <laughs> you know, dealing with that issue within the bishops and our marriage, you know, because he was, I consider, sort of that way. But I had to be patient with him. And I also told, I would tell him, I said, you have to sometimes put yourself in my shoes. On the, put, the self on, put yourself on the receiving end of you. And see how would you feel if you treated yourself yeah. how you yeah. treated your you wife yeah. or your children. Yeah. And when I and I would say that for years. I say, well it might not you might not be affected by that. Mm -hmm. But I'm affected. Right. So put yourself on the receiving end of your actions. Amen. Put the put yourself on the receiving end of your tone mm -hmm. or, or or on your ways or whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. And really you got sometimes you have to really say, because we say we're honest with ourselves, but really be honest and say, if I or someone on the street was to talk to me or, you know, brush me off, I would be really, really offended. If 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 the situation is other, you know, other people, if I if if my wife was to commune the way I commune. How would I feel sometimes we have to put ourselves on the receiving end of ourselves? And that e even with myself, you know, I had to, because I was always long-winded and laid like I probably is now. And I had to put myself on the receiving end of turn. And a lot of times when we do that, it really allows us that mirror image of who we, who we really are and how we're not just effective the positive atmosphere of our home, but our everyday life, the people who we come in contact mm -hmm. with, we have to really switch roles with our yes. own self. Amen. Yeah. And, yeah. and really say, I want to treat myself like that. Right. And if her and I are one, right. and these are my offsprings, then I can't treat them like that right. because hurting them is hurting me. Amen. And let me add to that too. One thing I noticed in our marriage is when we would argue, if I if I can go there, can I go there just for a minute? When, when we would uh, we, we would argue like cats and dogs. My Lord. And just like any other couple, you know, we'll argue. But I realized certain stuff I would say to her that I didn't think it would take effect on her. Like if I call her stupid. Like, you just dumb. You just skip on my... You so stupid. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, if she tell it to me, I'm like, whatever. Right. But when I said that to her, it'll trigger off something yeah. from her past right. that do more damage. You see what I'm saying? So it is... is you got to take... I had to learn how to take in consideration even choosing my words to, correctly because even we can make up an hour later... But for some reason, that thing is still, because I didn't, it's, it's like, you ever heard somebody say you um, get a wound, but then you said something, and then you just uncover the wound? Like, it's kind of like, is he took the wound off? So, you definitely want to keep in mind that the, um, 
the, the model of, 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 of feelings. Because feelings means a lot. And women are it delicate. We have so many layers yeah. right. to ourselves. And, and even though we go to God and we put a lot of our issues and mm -hmm. shortcomings and insecurities in his hand, mm -hmm. it's still, the layers are still there. Right. And it's nothing but a layer of grace, right. a layer of love, a layer of mercy that's on top of those. Right. And we depend on our spouses to keep adding to those layers so that they won't be so easily stripped down. So it's, we don't look to you guys to peel those layers back to get back to that womb that we allow God to cover. You want because to move it out. Yes, right. yes, and 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 uh, to let them bumps, you know, buff it out and things mm -hmm. like that. So every time you say something negative, that's a layer coming off, mm -hmm. and it's getting closer and closer to that wound. And a lot of times, when that wound is exposed, nothing but separation can heal it back up because that's what it took—separation from everything—to get that wound to close in the beginning. So we, it, it's almost like you have to have a conscious. What's Cognitive, cognitive, thinking. Cognitive, cognitive thinking. Cognitive thinking. Cognitive thinking. Yeah. You have to. And it's almost like, no, you, you shouldn't have to walk around your marriage or walk around your house or walk around your spouse with eggshells. But you have to really, really be considerate right. and, and aware. I mean, because, you know, just like me and my husband, I'm sure you're your wife, it's no secrets of what the past is or what, what will break them and things like that. And... It's our job to make sure that we don't be looked at as that hammer that broke the mirror. You understand what I'm saying? So it's more of a, you have to be, with women you gotta be, now I'm not saying that us women we can get reckless with our mouths and yeah. things like that. Cause a lot of times we say, oh yeah man, he can take it, he'll brush it off, whatever. But we just have to be more considerate. We don't want to be the inflictor of pain, we want to be the nurturer yes. of the pain. What's your opinion? Say, man, come and get him. What's your opinion? Two questions, yes, man. Two questions. Um, I'm divorced, and I was having a battle with him because um, I was trying to read the Bible to see if it was okay if I got remarried, because I know in the Bible it was talking about adultery and everything like that. Why did you get divorced? Um, he was, it was infidelity on his part, and he did divorce me. Well, my old pastor said, make sure he doesn't divorce, and he did all the infidelity, so make sure he does it. But um, I had a couple other leaders in the church, not my church, but other churches, tell me different things, and I just wanted to make sure that it was okay, biblically, for me to be remarried again for my husband that was supposed to be mine, so I'm not making him commit adultery. And then my second question is, as a single, say you find somebody who you're spiritually connected with, you guys are both worshiping, but in the same place or different places, and this could be a potential husband or um, wife. What is acceptable in a relationship when you're not married? Is kissing acceptable? And I'm not talking about intimately, but point just just lip to lip contact. Is that acceptable? Is you know staying the night, whether they be in the next room. What is acceptable in a Christian relationship when you're not married yet, but this is a great potential to be your spouse? Did you say nothing? I can't hear nothing. I heard somebody say nothing. Mama want to talk. Mama, I want to talk. Real quick. You want to kiss? You can go to bed. Yeah, yeah. If you want to be in another room with you, you can go to bed. You're going to 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 go to for my husband to be, but you know why I fell in love with my husband? Because he never asked me for a kiss. He never, and I thought that was like, this man ain't come to see me, but you know, he was trying to me. So I told him that I was a virgin, and I told him that I just don't want that for him to get close to me until we get married. Right. So he on the day, and I liked it then. So they come along, and they want to 
kiss you, and then oh, like, you're going to start feeling. Yeah. yeah. Then you're going to lay down, and, and then you're going to start crying, and then you go to God, you're not going to be crying. Mm -hmm. yeah. If if I can add if I can add, add to that, what, what, this is a major issue that that is really in the body of Christ because you really want to know how far can you go, what can you do, what can't you do, or whatever the case may be. I believe if you put yourself in an uncompromising or in a compromising situation, everything and anything. Is bound to take place. Yes. Amen. Um, when you're dating, I'm not saying that you can't go date and go out to eat and no, fellowship. It's about no but no, at the end, right, at, at the end of the day, you know, right? That's the thing. At the end of the day, you know you. You know what you know what you can handle, right. and you know what you are capable of. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I say this, you know, and you know, everybody know, you know, my oldest daughter you know, me and Bishop had out of wedlock mm -hmm. because we played with fire and we got burnt. We was young people in the church. Mm -hmm. We was of age. We weren't like teen parents or anything like that. We was of age and we had, you, you know, the mindset to do right and we had the mindset to do wrong. And at that point in time, we wanted to do you what must. we wanted to do right. that we thought we was never going to get caught doing. But you got to understand, it's all about no accepting who you are and knowing that you have the potential to fall. Amen. First of all, if you already experience sex, you already going to want it. So you can't deny it. Sex is a drug. It's a drug. It's like a cocaine or whatever. But you, you got to understand, if you're not a virgin, and you experienced sex before. You can say, I'm going to date this person cordially, whatever. But you get into a compromising situation. And they said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And they wrestling against each other. Why put, why? more than likely the flesh is going to win. Because what happens what plays on your spirit is we serve an awesome God. We serve a forgiving God. We serve, we serve a great... All the scriptures of how the many ways you can... All the many ways you can repent. So why put yourself in that situation? No, I would not turn back the hands of time and take back my blessing. I love my daughter and I love my children. But I know... At that time, I wish I would have waited. Not because of people or what the pastor thought or what the pastor's wife thought, or the, but because of what God thought of me at that moment when I delivered That's a real. child That's out of wetlock. That's, That's what I felt. Yeah. You, you understand what I'm saying? So if you already experienced sex, why even put yourself in that situation? Right. You you know what it feels like. Why? But, but, but can, I, can, can I add something to that? And, and I know most of y'all probably agree with this. If you know you are extremely horny now, don't eat, I wouldn't. If you're jonesing, I wouldn't even date. No, that's right. I wouldn't even date if you if you are up and, and you and you know that you, it's been a long time and all that. I wouldn't even put. I, I wouldn't beg of you not to put yourself in that predicament. Because you're not looking to date, you're looking for sex. Amen. Not only that, and I hate to get all medical because I don't have any medical degrees or anything. Well, but um, we have to understand, you know, the women reproduction, reproductive oh, yeah. system. We right. go in heat. Yeah. Right. So if you are dating, I think it's maybe like the. the Tenth day or something after your cycle, that's your that's your time to reproduce. That's when that egg is ready to be fertilized. So your mind is not going to be able to tell your body no because your body is ready to create. So why, if you know your cycle, you count them days on that counter. You say, look, Jack, I can't see you on these days right here because I already know that my my body, especially if you already. Created. Your, I mean, it's just the scientific fact of it. Right. The, the marriage. Go ahead. Yeah. Like, am, I, am I okay to be married without being um, The question I would ask about that was, was you saved when you first got married the first time? 
And was he, he saying, no, so that, I mean, I'm not going to say that marriage wasn't covenant under God, but. But marriage in general was covenant. I mean, now, I'm not going to say it wasn't covenant. Right. I'm saying it was covenant, but when you guys married unequally, yo, it kind of already set the foundation. Unless he came yes. into the covenant of Christ, mm -hmm. that it was already a crack. I believe that, you know, God said man shall not be alone. And I, I know that God put us here on earth for us to be happy. And I'm not going to say that God agrees with divorce, but in the nowadays times with the covenant of marriage being broken, <laughs> Like it's it, like it is, you know. Sometimes you have to do what you gotta do to get out of a situation, but that don't make you a spinster where you cannot go and be happy right. and find right. who God created your Eve to be. Where we evaluate ourselves, if any one of us in here has ever been divorced, and we really evaluate that first or second, mm -hmm. however many marriages we had, and we will really, really ask ourselves, should we really had gotten married? No. Do we really believe that God ordained us to marry that particular individual? Mm -hmm. We would know that we were we were already yeah. out of the will of God. Right. So how can he hold us, like he no, says, no, no, no. all sins are passed away. Right. When you operate out of the will of God, that is a sin. Marriage, yes, marriage or right. whatever. So you can marry, and your marriage can be a sin if God blatantly tell you you're That's not supposed to get married. Right. Unless he brings that marriage into covenant. So I don't, I mean, this is just my personal philosophy. I would have to study scripture on it, but I don't believe that. It, that God will condemn you or right. hold you as a spinster right. or well, whatever you have right now. And, you know, well, it's three um, things you got to remember. Um, three main reasons of divorce. Abandonment, Abandonment is one. Infidelity, infidelity is two. Yeah, and death yeah. is three. Okay? So you, you have three, according to scripture, if you're saying that your husband uh, had infidelity, and he did the divorce right. petition against right. you and decided to up and leave you. Right. That's a whole right. different yeah, yeah. story yeah, yeah. than you but getting married she, now. No, I'm just talking about right now. Even if she divorced him, I, I know that there are the other three reasons. Well, if, 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 infidelity. But right. this, is, this is like a really yeah. philosophical. Philosophical, philosophical <laughs> question because it really depends on only that individual know why they got married the first time right. sure. and it really depends on their peace with God mm -hmm. if God telling you is it okay for you to move on right. mm -hmm. I was going to say according to scripture um, the Bible says if a, 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 a woman is a person will say I'm paraphrasing and a man is not or be married, or married to a believer, and they choose to leave, let them leave. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You can't hold them. They right. right. choose to leave. God has Let released go. them. Right. You're, you're That's free. your release. Right. 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 And that, that's it. Yes, yes, man. So, since you want to, because they can't hear you out there. Just run, run over real quick. They can't. Hit, they can't hear you. Out there. You can the joke. <laughs> but while she's coming, you are free. And yes, you can. You know. Yes, you can. To answer your question in a nutshell, yes, you can. One thing the elder had said in the first thing said basically in a nutshell, that was your release. Right. That, because you cannot, and this is for everybody, and I, and I think everybody needs to hear this, and especially all hurting women, because yes. it's a lot of hurting women, especially in the church. Don't think of this condemnation right. mentality to think that, you know, well, I gotta hold on to him, but he's right. he done packed his bags, he done left, his car gone, his everything's gone. That's your past right there to freely release. Yes. That's God in it, obviously, to release you from that hurt, guilt, and pain yes. from the past. Does God give you the okay to start courting? Which is right, right. For the benefit of marriage? Use your mind, yes. It's, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> when God give you the okay that it's time to start courting mm -hmm. and being and preparing you for marriage, yes. it's, it's okay it's to okay. do It's right. okay to do that it's okay you know when you're ready when you're ready and, and you know a lot of times if, a lot of divorce wouldn't happen if we was ready right you understand what I'm saying? So true. 
and so you know, and if it's if it and if it's ordained by God, I've seen, and not just speaking on my marriage, but just being in counseling sessions with people that they married, put me and Bishop T is under the table. Infidelity is not the not always the straw that can break a camel's back. God can fix that too. You understand? So when it's ordained by God, That's He true. can fix almost anything. Now, if it's not ordained by God, no matter what you do to try to hold the pieces together, it's just going to fall apart. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Give it up, Sister Lisa Bell. Amen. Hold on, our time is, our time is running. Go ahead. Um, I kind of wanted to speak on a few things. Some of it is my opinion. You, use your um, mic. There you go. Use your mic. That's good. Some of it is my opinion. I think a lot of women kind of like judge themselves. When mm -hmm. God say don't judge, sometimes we feel bad because when you date people, you're doing that to get to know the person. Right. Yeah. I'm saying before you get married. I think a lot of women, just even speaking of myself, have dated and slept with the men that wasn't married. Mm -hmm. There was someone you was dating. Uh -huh. You know, but a lot of people make it look like you're trash and you're dirty. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us that have been dating or had kids, you had kids before you got married. Right. Right. It's not like we're going to hell or we no good because we did that. A lot of people got involved with men when they were young or dating. They slept with the man because they thought that was the right man. Right. But we all make mistakes right. and we shouldn't judge ourselves and feel bad. And speaking on a lot of the good women are in the church or good women not in the church, sure. we don't know that. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of women that come to church that's not good. Right. It's a lot sure. of women that come to church that is good. We don't know until we get to know the person or right. date the person right. or be with the person. Mm -hmm. In my case, in my opinion, I grew up with my husband. Mm -hmm. And we all know, and I'm not ashamed to say that my husband was from the streets. Right. You know, we grew up and we were friends and we, I, we were like brothers and sisters at first. Mm -hmm. You know, and we dated and got to know each other. And when I came to this church, he wasn't in the church. Mm -hmm. He wasn't saved, but I was. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and the thing I did, I didn't go to everybody, or oh, what should I do? Should I leave him? Or should I do this? Or should I do that? I went to Bishop. You know, I spoke to First Lady about it a couple of times, and I asked God, mm -hmm. even before we got married, if I should marry this man, show me a sign that I shouldn't. That's mm -hmm. right. Because I know you can. If I shouldn't marry him, then you stop it. Yeah. Right. You know, you stop this marriage. Right. He didn't. I believe that he was going to get saved. I don't know if he believed it, but I believed it in my heart. That's I wasn't right. trying to change him. I let God change him. Right. And we were married, and now he's in the church and saved. Right. You know, but there was times that it was troubles that I went through that I had to talk to Bishop about. Sure. And I'm not ashamed to say. I was scared at first because I was like, you know, either my husband won't get saved or I'm gone. Right. Mm -hmm. I might not sure. have that, mm -hmm. but I was going to go. Because I kept, and it was times I went to him, I would go home and we would talk about church, and he would talk about it. But he wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. But I was afraid if he don't get ready, what am I going to do? Right. God, you have to do something. Mm -hmm. If he don't get ready, I got to make a move. Right. Because you, I can't stay with him if he want to just be in sin. Right. Right. You know, right. so right. I say, God, something got to happen. You got this. You got my footsteps. Not man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got it. Right. You know, something got to happen. And then I had to pray because I had to learn to have patience. Right. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about me. Right. It was about God. And God time is always on time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. how I feel. That's good. Yeah. All right. Yes. Sister Kiva, we wait for Yes. Go, go on, Sister Kiva. Make sure it's Sister Kiva, y'all. Y'all all right, y'all right there. I'm going with you, my lady. Y'all all right. So, say, oh, say you're single, right? Yes, yes. And, well, you may have been saved, but then, like most of us, going out here, and you were introduced or put yourself in predicaments to explore sure. or to experience certain things. Mm -hmm. And, um, like, once you experience it, it does make it a lot harder. Sure. So, say you're real serious about your relationship with God, and you want to make sure you please Him in everything that you did. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go outside His will. But then you may have... You may have lived with someone, like I lived with two people before, and we lived together and did all of the little things that you do when you're married. 
So say you just decided, well, you're going to be single and you're going to be happy with single. And I heard some of my, some old church members from some years ago say that God will be your husband. Well, I never understood that because I'm sitting up here like, if you have a husband, there's just some things that's supposed to happen. <laughs>
and if you got to get out of there, if you got to go outside in the walk, I don't care if it's 20 degrees outside, you go outside and you walk. Because the point of the matter is if you keep giving it to those feelings and you keep convincing yourself that it's not enough, you're going to find yourself backslide right to hell. Yes. But as simple as that, because you're never going to get over it. It's, it yes, yes, yes ma'am, and then we can get, go ahead, quickly. I got to tell you, I mean, I don't know. If a lot of people know, you know, where I come from or anything like that. But I've done everything you said do. I mean, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I fasted, I did everything. But when I closed my eyes at night, mm -hmm. that one person would be like right here in my oh, face okay. and would be right here just basically doing what they did. Okay? Right. I tossed together, and I got in my head, and I said, Lord, please just take this away from me. But when I closed my eyes, right. it came back. Believe me, so I tell you, I fasted, I prayed, I, I stayed, I put my face down, I turned my plate down, I, I closed myself off to people and everything like that, honey. But when it happens, it happens because that connection was so strong. That's so It happens so much. So ties. One thing, if I can say this. You and you just said it. Mm -hmm. You gotta first rebuke the mind. Right. Your body isn't gonna do anything that the, the mind, mind don't own 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 You gotta rebuke the, the, the temptation thought. in right. your mind. Right. And because I mm -hmm. always go back to the self-awareness, you already know yourself. Mm -hmm. You right. already know that I go to bed at nine o'clock. I right. already know nine thirty I'm gonna be feeling some kind of way. You right. rebuke that thing before the clock even strikes the clock. Right. 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 You have to rebuke the mind yes. first. Yes. Because if you don't have control over yourself, right. you're not going to have control over anything. And, and, and let me say this. And, 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 let me say this. Oh, yeah. so, 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 let me add to this. Let me add to it. You, you, you must also understand. One thing about the lust spirit, and this is for everybody in the room. I know about it. I've been there. Many of us have testimonies that have been there and can wear the t-shirt on lust. Okay? Lust is thoughts in the mind. But one thing about the spirit, it you can feel his presence before it enters in. You gotta see what I'm saying? You, it's, it's, it reminds me of my old teacher. And my old teacher, I can always tell when he was in the room because I could smell his fragrance. Right. Like natural, like spiritual. And so somewhere, now here's, and I'm not saying this is damage, okay? Somewhere in you, there's a gate that's open. Right. Yeah. Right. That's what that is. And that lust yeah. spirit sees the open. Because remember, the spirit's only attack when it sees the entry. You see what I'm saying? And so, and again, I'm not saying it's a hold you. I'm saying it's a help you. But until you secure that one little gate, because it's not that you're brave enough right now to go out and commit the actual act with another. Right now, the thoughts of it is getting the best of your temper. Yeah. Yeah. And so until you close down yeah. that whole mind stimulation of it yeah. is when the enemy will start running to a brick wall. Yeah. Yeah. That's when the prayer, the fasting, yeah. um, the, the keeping your eyes and mind focused on God before it happens. You may even have to go as much as some of us have. I don't know anybody who's been like with this spirit know Sometimes we would have to rebuke it at the beginning of the day yeah. for the end of the night. Yeah. You have to, because I know me. Amen. And, I, and, you, and you treat it as any other stronghold any other thing, that it would be. Any other thing, any other shortcoming or whatever you classify as stronghold in your life, the same procedures that you take to make sure you don't, if you was, a partier or a drinker or a smoker. The same things, the same steps, the same, you know, realization that you did to overcome that, you have to give the same effort to overcome this. A lot of times we classify our shortcomings and say, 
well, this is just part of who right, I right, am, right, right, this right, human right, nature right, and things right, like that. But we we have to put them all under the same classification as a stronghold. Amen. And we have to be determined to pull down that stronghold right. with you know, with the power of God so that we won't have to battle it every day. Don't be a prisoner to your own mind, to your own feelings, to your own stimulation. Don't be a prisoner to that because when you're a prisoner to that, you're going to become a prisoner to a lot of other things within your own mind. And it just creates a domino. I know you have a question, but I want to say something. Just because a person is married, don't think that they don't struggle. With oh, that. that's good right there. Yeah. yeah. Me and my husband been married be 14 years this year. We've been together a total of 18 years because we dated four years before we got married. But as you get older, right. and your parents can testify to this, as yes. you get older, one or the other is not as active. Right. right. Or if you're on certain type of medications, right. somebody may not can perform. Right. So you're married, you're sleeping beside somebody right. every night, but you may have urges, but you still can't right. Right. satisfy those That's urges. Right. Right. So you still have to resist still temptation. Right. Keep yourself away from those situations that yes. will cause you to fall. Right. And I can testify that there were times that my husband and I, we had gotten into an argument before I went to work. Right. And I went to work, and there was a good looking man. Like, mm -hmm. mm. Right. But I had to flee yeah. because I knew, given the opportunity, right. you know, I, I, I could. Right. Right. Because right. that was one of my struggles, too. Right. Um, even single. But you have to, like uh, Minister Vash, I said, remove yourself. Yes. Sure. You have to remove sure. But you have to make up your mind right. that no matter right. what, I'm not giving into my right. flesh. Exactly. You have to make up your mind, make that covenant oh, yeah. with God. Right. God, I'm pleasing you because you, when you say, God, I want to please you, right. but you give into your flesh, you're not really, because it's in your mind, you're not really saying, God, you, you, right. you, 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 you're you worshiping with your mouth. But right. your heart is far from right. him. Right. Because right. Your, your fleshly <laughs> desires are more important right. than your relationship with God. Right. And yeah. I'm speaking from experience and I'm testifying yeah. and I'm not judging. But right. I understand and I know what it has, what it takes right. to get out of that. Yeah. God is more important to you. Right. Because you may not be with a person, but you still experience in the sin. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you're separating yourself from, from God. And, and I just have the last thing, uh, to say, you know, I was reading when I was studying, I can't remember where, and it talked about fantasies. Yeah. And how it's actually witchcraft. And I'm not saying it to, you know, be like the holy roller in the world, but tapping around with different fantasies yes. opening up a door for yeah. witchcraft. Yeah. And it yeah. creates an illusion yeah. mind to the point where you'll become delusional and it'll seem so real right. that you're actually living in a fantasy. And when you when you are fantasizing and it seems so real, you're actually entered into a realm of witchcraft mm -hmm. to the point where you're playing with the Prince of the Power. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so I got to put no more sheets, right? <laughs> no more sheets. <laughs> Wait, I wanted to put oh, so I got to put no more sheets in the course. I need to buy me, like, I really feel as though I need to buy me, really got to say some certain things. Yeah. So she had a party to talk about that. Power. So I um, I had decided that since, you know, certain things are really, really strong, uh -huh. that my prayer was, God, can you take it away? Like, I know he gives you, he gives females the desires, he gives men, but he gives men never thing. So I was like, well, God, can you turn it off? Until either I'm able to handle this or until my husband comes along, can you turn it off? Well, I was told by a mother of a church that you're not supposed to do that because when God gives you, that's something God gives you, you're supposed to ask him to help you to control it. But then I figured for myself that because I know me, that I need to ask God to turn it off. Like, I don't need to you feel can. any of it. So I wanted to know if that was, if that was right or if that, I don't think that, if that was right or if that was, if that was wrong. Like, if he could take the design, I don't know. Something like that. That, used, that was my prayer after reading to know what she put. But now for someone who is thinking about getting married, I have a question. So you are in a relationship and maybe you get into a heated argument or whatever, something you get heated. 
Mm-hmm. And I was told that most men like to go and get away for a minute just to breathe or gather sure. their thoughts or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then I'm the type of person who I want to handle something right then and there. Right. So when I asked my friend about, you know, just asking him questions just to know how he would deal with certain things, he said that he was one of the ones that want to go that needs to go out or, you know, places might have a minute. Yeah, so it. how do you, like, if you're the type of person that just want to go at it and get it straight down right in the day mm-hmm. and your husband needs to step away for a minute, mm-hmm. how do you, That's like, not fair to him. You got to compromise. You got you to compromise and give him some time. <clears throat> most men, most of us men, we, we, we are not, um, we don't like the whole arguing scene. Most of us men, we like we'll talk about it, and then you know. But if if you keep putting the pressures on pressure on us, we need we need a minute to kind of regroup because and that's a way for us to control our anger. Yes, that's right. Because once we launch off, we off, you know, and it takes a minute to go and go down. And she can tell you because you know I, I'm like a rocket ship. That's just me personally. I don't give glory out of it, but I just know. You know, from it's zero to sixty. Crazy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> from zero to sixty. I heard he get that from their waters, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but you gotta give him, gotta give him some time to to as long to as the sun doesn't set. And lot, the Bible says as long as the sun, the, the sun don't set on your wrath. Let me say this. And, and, uh, yes, sir. Yes, question. Yes, sir. Okay, now what if y'all you and your spouse y'all done got in an argument, mm-hmm. and you want to talk about it? Mm-hmm. Now, the man want to talk about it? Yeah. Uh-huh. But see, that's how I am. Yeah. I can get mad now mm-hmm. and be happy next 15 minutes. Sure. She can <laughs> hold it for two or three days. Right. right. So now, if you know that, then you some, okay, one, but somebody give, got it. Okay, but I give her two or three days sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then when I come back. back to ask about it, it blows up again. So how you handle that? But well, you, your your mate, well, your mate should be able to find you and your yeah. mate should be able to find common ground yeah. to be able to attack the situation once and for all for the final time, and then let it go. Because don't have unsettled. Because if you keep, if you're gonna attack it one time, and then yeah. the one mate don't want to deal with it, then you come back two, three days later and still can't find common ground. You, you then at that moment you got a whole bunch of confusion that's gonna just keep on piling. Yeah, see, on I'm, a, I'm a lot like uh, Deacon Freddie and uh, I mean like Sister Phoebe. I'm like into the door and to I say the door is shut, it's still open. My Lord. But I oh. had to, yeah. So even though you say, well, I don't wash my hands of it, I'm going on about my business. I, I'm not satisfied with that. You know, mm-hmm. I want closure. But sometimes we have to accept closure for what it is. And somebody has to say, you know, we discussed this. And even though we might not solely agree, we're going to agree to disagree. Because what we have is more important and more valuable than this particular situation. Right. So we got to respect gotta how, an yeah, way. and you got to respect how everyone deals with a disagreement. Right. Some people, if you know you got a hot head, then the more settled one need to leave the room. Right. If you know you got a weeper, then somebody got to be the comforter. I mean, it's you got to know how each other deals with situations right. and meet each other on that level, and then agree to disagree if you can't come to a mutual agreement, mm-hmm. and then kind of like got to move on from there. Um, Get, 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 oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Who are you going to? Other orders? Oh, no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. I got to go to work tomorrow. Let's give the Lord some praise. Give the Lord some praise. You want to ask a question? Who wanted to ask a question? If I could just say one thing before we leave, I'll be okay. Um, I think like everybody for watching. Oh, it's definitely got questions. Oh, and yeah, we have so many, um, you know, so many things. Well, this could be a part one, two, three, and four to this here. Sure. But um, one, one um, I, well, I guess I, I guess I'll go to her first, and I'll be getting pretty. One thing about when temptation comes, and that's why we we invite people and we tell our especially new generation people all the time, come out to these Bible classes, Sunday school, and church services. Not to say y'all don't, but I'm just saying. The devil's only going to fight you on your weak parts that you haven't really 
conquered yet. Uh -huh. so he's coming back on those props because he you know those are props he had you bound on. He's coming back to see what you mean, what you say out of your mouth when you pray. Fasting is, according to the Bible, one of the fastest ways of getting this flesh under subjection. Amen. So it has to work according to the Bible. Now, if something is wrong with the working of it, let's not put it down. If something is wrong with the working of it, maybe it's what we are doing. Maybe we're going about it wrong. Now, the only thing I can say about, um, you know, I can say, it's not, I can say this, but it's just like a, oh, man, almost like a sermon. But with Deacon Freddie, I know what you're talking about because of the fact that I, I said before how I had that wall up and nobody could penetrate it when I didn't want to talk to you or get mad. My wife would tell me all the time, you've been good at you. You should have been in the mafia somewhere. You know, but I never get nothing out of you. But I found out as the word of God started getting inside of me, what came about was that word, which is in the Bible, called forbearance, which means sometimes there will come times when you have to just put up That's with right. things. Yeah. You have to endure things. So it's all a part of growing. What we what we learn now because like starting off with the um, this particular subject here, and the bishop said it, really the enemy that we are warfaring warring against is so. He is cool. <laughs> He'll just come when you least expect it, and if you don't watch it, if you don't, if you're not spiritually conscious of what's going on, yes, he will get into us too who are Christians. Amen. Because I say it over and over again, each and every day we wake up, there's a battle going on between our flesh. And our spirit. Yes. Sure. It's who we yield to. Yes. It's who we're going to obey. Amen. Sure. But we have to know what spirit it is that's really attacking us. Because we say all the time, there are three types of spirit. Even when you get down to pray. Yourself, the spirit of the devil, and the spirit of God. Which one is it that's trying to get a hold of you? Sure. And it's not hard because God equipped us with the, with the word here. Amen. We've been talking this about all week long, especially me. On the power comes in the knowledge sure. of God's word. Sure. The more knowledge we get, the more we can overpower the devil. When we get this power, notice like y'all all said here tonight, the more you are growing, getting this knowledge in you, the more the attacks are, the harder they are. Because now you're getting power, more power over it, because now you are learning the truth. The truth will set you free according to the word of God. So as you learn the truth of the word, now you're going to be judged by what you know. Right. So the test is going to come even harder to see if you're going to pass the test. God is on our side. He's going to give us a strength to endure this test and pass the test. We just have to know who we are, like a lot of y'all saying, who we are in God, because God is going to strengthen us in our weaknesses. Why? Because you're going to intervene to get the glory of We don't want the devil to get no glory. We just have to realize that, hey, it's not about that devil. We don't have nothing on us. We are the ones who are conquerors. Yeah. We are the ones who are victorious. Yeah. And we just have to know this. But like I say, there's something in there. If you go on and on and on forever, we just have to know the truth according to God's word. That's why we come out all the time to hear the word. So that we can get in us. Once you get in us again, if we are failing the test each and every time, and I say this humbly, if we are failing the test each and every time, it's because we are not doing what we are hearing. Sure. If God is speaking to us according to his word, like I say all the time, when the bishop, even the words were spoken here tonight, when they're going out Sunday service, when the bishop is preaching, the word that comes forth, if we don't do anything with that word that we are learning, then we are defeating ourselves. And it's not hard to get defeated by the enemy because we're already defeated. We are putting to use what God is telling us. Sure. It's his word. Amen. 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 Come on, can you stand and keep our hand in front of you? Come on, can you stand and keep our hand in front of you? Amen. <laughs> How are you enjoying tonight? Amen. 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 I know we're a little bit over time. Amen. But our thing tonight was to kind of help minister on Valentine's Day to the marriage and singles. I'm going to ask you things if, if, if Elder Hannah can come. And I, and I want her to pray. Amen. For the singles. Amen. If, if she don't mind. Amen. Because I, I believe that this is the time that God really wants uh, just to bind in Christ. And, and I'm going to be praying. How many is going to be praying for each other? Amen. 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 My heart go out to everybody. Pray yes. for all of us. Yes. Amen. Pray for all of us that God would just uh, be with us. How many say amen? Amen. And that God would do a mighty thing, a mighty work, a mighty work 
Amen. A mighty thing. And I, I believe that this is a season four in Jesus' name. I'm just saying amen. 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 Then Elder Waters, if you don't mind, amen. Pray for the married couples tonight. Now, you know, just we just gonna pray and believe God. Can you just bite your hitch right where you are? Amen. Come on, we're gonna pray for the singles. Amen. Father, we come before you right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Yes. God, we come to say thank you, God, for this session, God. Thank you, God, for all the revelation, the wisdom, and the knowledge, oh God, that was imparted this night, God. God, we pray right now for our single members, oh God. God, that you would touch them now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Strengthen them now, God, in their areas of weakness, oh God. God, give them the courage, God, to resist temptation, God, in the name of Jesus. God, you said in your word, oh God that we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto you god which is our reasonable service and to be not conformed to this world but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind god i pray right now that our singles oh god will allow your word to transform them oh god to transform their mind change their way of thinking god that they will be able god to present their bodies god as a living sacrifice god i pray now god for the spouse that they are praying for god god that they will wait on you god and you only oh god that they will not be caught oh god by the devil oh god they will not be tricked and deceived god but God, show them and reveal to them now, God. Yes, if right. it is your will yes, for them to be married, God, yes, let them rest in it and wait on you. Yes, if it is not your will, God, for them to be married, but to stay single, God, let them find comfort and peace in that, God. But God, let them seek your will and your will only. In Jesus' name we say. Amen. Amen. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we yes, just thank you and praise you, Lord God, for each and every married couple, Lord yes, God. Lord, just bond us together even tighter in unity, Lord yes, God. Thank you, God. Lord, just bring us together, Lord God, that we can conversate with one another, Lord God. Yes, Lord, that we can be an example to those, Lord God, who are looking for the same unity, Lord God. Yes, Father, we pray right now, Lord God, you just use us, Lord God. Yes, and because we learn, Lord God, in unity there is strength, Lord. Yes. Use us to tear down the strongholds of the enemy, Lord yes, God. Let your people can see that you are real and that you are true, Lord God. Yes. Father, just use us in a mighty way, Lord God, that we can show this Jones our generation, Lord God. Yes. That, Lord God, you, whatever you put together, Lord God, let no man put a song, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, just draw us tighter, Lord God. Yes. Tighter, Lord God. Just put a choke on us, Lord God. And we can just go forth, Lord God, and do what you want us to do, Lord God. We can just go forth as a Unit, oh God, as one, oh God, one in unity, oh God. Lord God, just speaking your word, let the name of Jesus be lifted up, oh God, yes, that the people can see, oh God, that it's you and not us, oh God. Yes, We're putting forth all this after you're awakening the will and to do within us, oh God, and we can be strong in you, oh God. And Father, we pray right now, oh God, and even more married couple will come in, oh God, yes, send us out, oh God, new generation, and we will flourish, oh God. Lord God, we just pray right now that you just release us, oh God, just to do your will in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank God for all the ones who tuned in tonight. Don't forget, amen, Sunday morning service, amen, at 11 a.m. Bring a friend. For those of you who are in new membership classes, amen, please make sure you're here at 10 a.m. Amen. And uh, for those of you who are not, don't forget Sunday school is happening. Other words will be upstairs and that will be downstairs with new members. Amen. Come on, be a part. There will be a... Uh, uh, I think teen or uh, Sunday school, I'm, I'm sure, this weekend. Amen. So, parents, please bring your teens, bring your kids. Amen. Let them be a part of it in Jesus' name. Amen. If we can have any men, he male help real quick to just kind of, oh, Sandy, amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. So, Sandy, amen.